Hi, I'm Alexandros Hiastos and you may have seen me training the wheels of my bikes in my Instagram bike maintenance stories and today I'm going to share with you my standard wheel training workflow. Note that the procedures that we are about to discuss can be applied by anyone as no special tool is required apart from a spoke wrench that is suitable for your spoke nipples. However, I'm going to use my custom dial indicator holder that we built during our last video but alternatively you can use cable ties or any tool that you want in order to indicate the out of turns of your wheel. Today I'm going to maintenance the front wheel of my 26 trials bike as it's been so long since the last time I decided to make sure that it's true. The main idea of wheel tuning is that you should tension the spokes of each side of your wheel at the same tension so as to have a balanced wheel. Generally, you will get a different tension measurement for each side but it's not necessarily a problem. I know you're going to tell me that I told you that I will trim my wheel without using any special tools such as a tensiometer so as to measure the spoke tension and it's true, but be patient and stick with me for a while. So I was talking about equal spoke tension for each side of our wheel but that doesn't make our wheel true. In fact this means that the spokes pull with the same force its nipple and has the relevant point on the rim. You could have a well tensioned rim but be out of true both radially and laterally. You should understand that each spoke controls the behavior of the rim mainly because of its length that is controlled by the amount that we turn its nipple. The tension is to structurally balance and pretension the wheel. Keep always in mind that no rim is strong enough to significantly elongate the spokes of your wheel which means that the spokes are in control. Thus you have to figure out two aspects of the same problem. First, you have to have a well balanced wheel in terms of spoke tension and second we have to figure out the screw position of each nipple so as to have a rim that is true both radially and laterally. But first things first, we have already discussed that we have many ways to indicate the out of turns of a wheel and that my preferred ways by using my trust indicator holder. However, we have discussed about the different ways to check the tension of a spoke. For this reason we can always use a spoke tensiometer but this procedure is slow and personally I use it just to finally verify it, that I'm within an acceptable tolerance in terms of spoke tension. So my preferred tension checking process is by sound. To do that, each spoke can be considered as a string attached at both ends and as you already know, the more you tension a string, the higher the pitch you get. So, I check the tension of the spokes by sound and I can assure you that I get excellent wheel turning results every time and my wheels are always as strong as they can be. Ok, I've been told that some of you may have issues distinguishing each different tone of the spokes you tighten. If so, I guess that you can use a tuning app for guitars or something similar. However, I don't think that it's too hard to get it and if you practice you will get it better each time. So let me show you how to distinguish the different tones and has the different tension between a couple of spokes. As you can hear, this spoke produces a higher pitch tone and this means that it's more tension than the other one. Note that I check the tone by pulling the spoke with my finger and not with my nail. As when pulling with a nail or when hitting the spoke with a tool, you will get overtones and this will make it more difficult to distinguish the actual tone of its spoke. Another very important issue that we have to address is the actual value of the tension and how we can check it. This value has to be defined mainly by the specs of your rim as your hub and the spokes are not usually the weak link of a wheel. Also your riding style is also crucial as the tension of the spokes of your wheel increases momentarily every time you try in drops, jabs or reverse stoppies. However, you cannot estimate the tension of your spokes without a spoke tensiometer. So it's up to your feeling and your experience to get a base tension that will not overtide your wheel. Personally, I tend to bend together two spokes of each side so as to get the feeling I want from my wheel. You can compare the feeling with other similar wheels that you think that they are well tightened but I strongly suggest you to consult your mechanic if you want to get it right and you don't have the required experience. Ok, having discussed all this and given that now we know how to check both the tension of the spokes and the out of turns of the wheel, let's go back to my wheel train procedure. The first thing I do is to mount my dial indicator holder on my bike and check the overall turns of the wheel. I give the wheel a couple turns and try to keep in mind the high and the low spots of the wheel. Then I go around and check the variation of the tension of each spoke and check if there are spokes that are loose or over tensioned. Considering both the indicator's value and the tension of each spoke, I try to coarsely tighten all the spokes at the same level based on the sound they produce. For this specific wheel, I will go for the same tension for both sides as it's a symmetrical wheel, which means that the length of the spokes are the same for both sides. Keep in mind that the length may be different when you have disc brake or a freewheel. 
At that point, I don't care too much about the of trueness, I just want to get everything well and equally tighten. However, you should keep in mind that tighten one side will tighten also the other side. And so if you have a high spot when you tighten the spokes around the wheel, you should consider tighten more the side that will also correct the high spot. At that preliminary stage, I try to get the out of trueness less than plus or minus 1 mm. Now that I tend to have my wheels well maintained, I never let them be significantly out of true, and I strongly advise you to do the same as it will ensure the longevity of your wheels. Having everything equally tightened, it's time to start caring a little bit more about the out of trueness. At that point, I check the actual profile of the wheels out of trueness and keep notes of the high and the low spots. Also, I try to understand the influence of its problematic area to the general profile of the wheel. Then, I closely check the disc of the wheel, considering the relative distance between the rim and my fork or chain stays, and I decide the value on my indicator that will be considered at the center of my wheel. Now, I go around my wheel, and for every high spot on the profile of the wheel, I try to get it through by losing the one side and tighten the other side, making sure to keep the same spoke tension before and after the trim procedure. You should keep in mind that your wheel is a system and every time you change something, the wheel changes as a whole. So, every time you try to make a portion of your wheel true, you should check the rest of the wheel for changes regarding its trueness and the tension of the spokes. Wheel drawing is a long process and you shouldn't do it in a hurry if you want to get your wheels as good as possible. After some iterations of the previous process, the wheel is true and the spokes are well tightened. Or are they? Actually, we should keep in mind that every time we tighten a nipple, the spoke is deformed due to torsion. This effect is more pronounced for longer spokes. Before we finish, we have to make sure that everything is stable on our wheel and we have no fake tension due to torsion. So, between every stage of our wheel trim procedure, it's mandatory to distress the spokes of the torsional stresses. To do that, I apply two different procedures. First, I bend the spokes by grabbing the couples, and then at the final stages of my wheel trim procedure, I remove the indicator and I put load of the wheel as if I were riding my bike. This is why I keep the tire on my wheel during the trim procedure. Distressing the wheel this way, I want to hear the spokes making a distinctive sound that indicates that they are distressed. Ok, that's the sound I was talking about. Note that you can also prevent the torsional stresses in some extent if you try to lose a little bit the spokes every time you tighten them. This will allow them to get a little bit distressed, but you should also follow a more active distress procedure so as to make sure that everything is ok. After a lot of repetitions of tensioning, distressing, trimming and again distressing, we can get our actual deviation of the out of trueness profile to be as close as plus or minus 0.1 mm, which is actually a value that I get almost every time I trim my wheels. Also, following the procedure and making sure that the rim is true and the spokes are well tightened and distressed, we can say that the wheel is actually balanced and ready for action. Before I leave you, I wanted to show you a problematic area of my rim that I noticed while trimming. As you can see, the spokes may be well tensioned while the overall trueness of my wheel is more than acceptable. However, I have this area that is out of true and I cannot do anything to make it true. As you can see, the wheel is buckled between the spokes and there is no way to make it true again unless I get it out of my fork and try to bend it to its opposite side, but this is risky and I don't want to risk damaging my wheel. So I will leave it for now and I will keep in mind that my front wheel may have to be replaced in the near future if this rim buckling issue gets worse. Being aware of such imperfections on my wheel makes me love more my wheel indicator holder as it makes much more easier to understand the actual condition of my wheel and spot problematic areas that may need attention. So, be sure that you will see a lot more action of this custom tool in the future. If you haven't seen how I made this tool, you can find the link in the relevant video at the description below. Finally, let's check the final tension of the spokes using my spoke tensiometer so as to check that all the spokes are actually tightened almost equally. In fact, I usually tolerate small deviations in the actual measurements. However, larger deviation could indicate that the rim is a little bit buckled and thus may be close to the end of its life. We are going to discuss more about the use of spoke tensiometers in a future video. Ok, that's it for today and I would like to learn more about your preferred procedure to true your wheels of your bikes. Also, I would love it if you share with us any wheel truing tips and tricks that you do when you true your wheels. If you like this video, 
smash the like button and in case you are new to our channel subscribe and hit the notifications bell so as to get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, if you think that it's helpful, feel free to share it with your friends. Finally, we can always be in touch by following me on social media accounts. You can find the links to the relevant accounts in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Until then, make sure that your bikes are well maintained.